Well, hello again, friends. My name is Reverend Thomas Harper, and I'm the pastor of St. Luke's United Methodist Church in Bryan College Station. This is Weekly Theistic Reflections, where each week I take a verse of scripture, unpack it a little bit, talk about maybe what's going on in the context of that scripture, how that scripture might relate to what's going on in our world today, or just share some thoughts that I have surrounding that scripture. If you're new here, I invite you to take a look around the channel. If you like the content, please click like and subscribe. That will help me out a lot, as well as click that notification bell in order to be notified every single time I post a new video. I make a video every single Thursday. And as always, if you think someone would benefit from the content of this specific video, I invite you to share that video with them in order to be a blessing to them. I've entitled this episode, A Well-Written Character. Scripture that I picked for today comes from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. And so, not too long ago, I found myself watching one of those old Western movies, like back in the 50s. And as I was sitting there watching it, I couldn't believe how flat the characters were. Like, the good guys all wore white, and the bad guys all wore black. And the funny thing was, like, their motivations were just as flat. So, like, the good guys were just good because one of the good guys, and the bad guys didn't really have any depth to why they had these motivations to be doing bad things. They were just, quote, the bad guys. It's funny to see just how shows have evolved over the years. Because nowadays you can't really get away with having such flat characters in your stories. Um, our heroes need to have some depth to them. They need to have some flaws. There's, we have this emergence of the tragic hero these days. Uh, is a lot more interesting and it's a lot more relatable. And the bad guys can't just be bad guys because that they're quote, the bad guys. Uh, you can't get away with writing a character like that. We need to have some depth, some understanding and meaning behind their motivations for how they have gone astray and why they are doing what they are doing. Nowadays, it would be considered lazy writing if our characters were just, I'm the guy in the black hats and I'm the guy in the white hat, so I'm the good guy, I'm the bad guy sort of thing. The best writers today can make us sort of change our mind about a character over the course of the show. Uh, start them off as a typical flat bad guy, but over the span of the series start to help us sympathize more and more with this character to where we almost start to ask ourselves, well, is this person a bad guy anymore or is he a tragic good guy? If you watched my video that I entitled Why Episode 8 is Not a Star Wars Movie to Me, you know that I'm really into a good redemption story. Uh, and it's the best writers that can really have that arc of redemption go all throughout, starting off as a bad guy all the way to redeemed in the end. One of the best writers that I think is at doing this is J.J. Abrams. J.J. Abrams can take a character uh, and make him to where they're really bad in the beginning, but then you start to sympathize with them, and as you start to really start to see them as, well, maybe this is a good guy, then he'll just quickly pull the rug out from underneath you and remind you of how he was such a bad guy. Again, I think about the shows uh, Alias and Lost, where uh, Lost had Benjamin Linus, where you just loved to hate that guy, but then after a while you started to like him, you started to sympathize with him. Uh, Alias had Arvin Sloan that you just uh, couldn't understand why people would trust him again, and then you started to trust him again, and I just, JJ's really good at writing dynamic characters that make us change our minds about who they are and what we think about them over time. I'm currently doing a sermon series on the life of David that I am entitled, David, a man after God's own heart. And David was anything but a flat character. You wanna talk about tragic heroes. If you actually go back and read his story all the way through, uh, he has some major highs and major lows in his life. And the impetus behind this sermon series as we walk through his story is this idea that how was someone who had so many flaws uh, things that would, you would consider life-defining, like this is going to define who you are um, as a murderer or as a killer or as someone who um, cheated on his spouse, you know, these, these life labels that define a character, and yet we still remember him as a man after God's own heart. And so how was he able to do that? How was he able to, uh, one, not wear those labels himself, because the shame and guilt that comes with those big things must have been really hard for him to get past. But two, how is he able to open up his own heart 
to still be forgiven by God in the midst of all of those things. I like David's story because he is a character that we can all relate to. He's, he's a very flawed individual that did mighty things through the hands of God in his life. And so I think when I think about David, I think, man, that's somebody who went to such depths of bad at times, but the overarching remembrance of his character in the Bible is a man after God's own heart. And so that should give us hope for our own lives. Um, that should give us hope for our own redemption arc and story. Because there is nothing that has happened in your life to this point that has to define your character in the end. God is the master storyteller of your life, and he's actively writing your story. And so join in. Join in to God's telling of your story and allow Christ to be the author of your ending. Here's a question that I want you to ponder. What would you say defines your character to this day? How do you want to be remembered in life? While you're here, I invite you to check out this video I entitled, What is Your Talent? It's a video on the parable of the talents and how God uses us in unique ways uh, to bring blessings to other people. And it's kind of this more on this topic about allowing yourself to be used for eternal work by God. Uh, and so if you're interested in that, I invite you to check that out. If you're in the Bryan College Station area, I invite you to check us out. We have a worship service every single Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We also live stream here, uh, so you can join us via Facebook live stream from wherever you are. Um, you can also check out our website, see what uh, stuff we have going on, uh, videos and services from the past, just to get an idea of who we are and what we're about. But if you're in the area, we'd love to meet with you. We'd love to get to know you. We'd love to do life and ministry with you. Uh, but until next time, friends, um, remember that the story that God is writing in your life is not finished yet. And that whatever you know yourself as or other people know yourself as, know that God is writing your character arc right now. And so be a well-written character in the name of the Lord. Until then, friends, continue to love each other well. Take care.